a friend and uh, it was a moral session for uh, Asim Donchev, who was a, a colleague and a friend of many of us here. And uh, certainly he was a friend of uh, the Wombat workshop. And uh, indeed, I think uh, Asan was our keynote speaker two years in a row earlier on when we were just getting this workshop going. And he was a, a grand supporter and contributed great, really greatly to the field. And, uh, and I think is a very uh, worthy uh, person to, uh, to, uh, to uh, think about and to discuss and to memorialize uh, at this time. Uh, I believe that we've got uh, uh, Asan's daughter, Mira, here. And uh, so I think we'll begin with Mira because uh, uh, I, I think she uh, uh, probably uh, uh, has, has, uh, was bursting to say some things about her wonderful father. So go ahead, Mira. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for um, including me and um, really honoring my dad today. It's really, um, it's really touched me and, and, um, and my mom and my brother were really, really so happy that all of you are here thinking of him. Today is 90 days since he passed, which for us is a very special day. Um, and so it's especially well-timed this specific event and this um, specific session. So thank you so much. Um, I look forward to hearing from all of you for a little bit. I'm, I'm here in Seattle, so it's quite late for me, but I, I will stay on and, and listen and, and um, happy to, to connect in other ways as well, as well. So thank you so much. Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Mira. Um, and, and also, uh, I, I can see Terry's joined us online. I'm wondering whether Terry might, might say a few words uh, if he wishes to, uh, uh, just to begin. I, I know we've got a, uh, a recording from Terry, which we'll play a bit later on, but um, I'll invite Terry to say something uh, if, if, he, if he feels so. Okay, um, I think we've got, uh, we'll, we'll be getting a, a, some uh, a recording from Terry in a moment. Uh, so we'll uh, see whether we can get some comments from Terry at that point. Uh, I uh, think I'm first uh, cab off the rank here. So, uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll uh, begin by saying a few words. What, what I intend, we intend to do during this uh, session is to uh, have some people give some uh, personal reflections on their friendships and their, their experiences with Hassan and uh, also some people to give some uh, uh, discussion about Hassan's contribution to mathematics, uh, which was, was very significant and touched us all. And many of us wrote papers with Hassan and uh, I did as well, I was very privileged to do so. So I'll uh, try and say my few words now. So um, see if I can share my screen. Uh, okay. Okay, can you see that? Yes, it's here. Oh, good, thank you. Uh, so uh, what uh, I've got here is just a few things to, uh, uh, that I collected together to, uh, to uh, remember Asan by. And uh, uh, first of all, as we all know, Asan loved fishing and it was a very big part of his life. He loved the water and so on. And, uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, we uh, had a, uh, a little graphic made up uh, for a, a, a workshop that we had uh, for, to uh, uh, celebrate Hassan's 70th birthday, which was actually done by one of my uh, children, and uh, of Hassan fishing for formula. And so he had, had a couple of passions where one of them was fishing, one of them was mathematics. We tried to uh, capture it in this particular graphic. And so there was a workshop in Ballarat uh, a few years ago that uh, uh, Variational Analysis Down Under that uh, Asan attended. We uh, celebrated his 70th birthday. Asan came to Australia a number of times. In fact, he, uh, he attended uh, many Wombat workshops for, for a number of years. And uh, there were some workshops at Ballarat he attended. And I used to drive him back from Ballarat in my car and we'd talk about things and mathematics. And, and in one time in doing so, um, it may have been this workshop. There's a, 
a little picture of the uh, variational analysis down under group. You can see many of the familiar faces we have here today. And uh, driving back, uh, Hassan, uh, of course, uh, talked talk to me about his passion. One of his passions was about uh, uh, the era bounds and conditioning. And this example was something that Hassan used quite frequently. In fact, this was taken from a ASC discovery grant that we had both submitted um, with a number of other people. We tried twice to get this grant up and, uh, and uh, almost succeeded both times that uh, I'm afraid we, were, we, were, we were, uh, didn't quite make it. But uh, Hassan always said, well, look, you know, uh, error bounds are all about conditioning. And so he had uh, this grant was indeed about the idea that this is very fundamental and very applied mathematics, not just great pure mathematics. In fact, it was about numerics. And uh, so uh, on one uh, uh, drive back from Ballarat, he rose, uh, raised this idea of trying to look at monotone operators and uh, uh, the sort of error bounds. And so you can look at a, uh, a measure of monotonicity, which we can define here. And uh, we have an operator that's strongly monotone if that's strictly positive. And so we, uh, we wrote a paper and, uh, in which there was uh, this particular radius theorem, uh, which is associated with perturbations of strongly monotone operators. And it has the usual kind of uh, uh, flavor that a lot of these uh, theorems that Terry and, uh, and Hassan had uh, worked on. In fact, Terry worked on this paper with us as well. And uh, it talked about how much can you perturb something before it loses a property. And the whole idea of the ASC grant was indeed uh, that we could apply this to optimization problems. So just as an example, uh, what, what some results appeared in this paper. Um, and I must say, this is sort of work that I think Hassan had some passion for and wasn't really completed, uh, unfortunately. And uh, so I think uh, I'm mentioning this in the hope that other people might take some sort of interest in this line of, line of thought. So we have an optimization problem subject to some polyhedral constraint. And of course, we have the usual optimality conditions. We have the first order optimality conditions and one can define the critical cone and then look at the uh, Hessian and of the objective and put, uh, place some second order optimality conditions in order to ensure that we've got a, 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 a suitable minimum. And uh, what we can then do is we can think about perturbing the optimization problem. So the optimization problem might be perturbed by in the objective by a function H and that's the subject of this particular paper. And, uh, and we can develop a radius theorem that talks about how much can you perturb the uh, problem before you lose the second order optimality conditions wholly. And it, it's related to certain quantities that appear in the optimality conditions. We didn't look at uh, uh, perturbing the constraints, of course, this is a much harder problem and a much more interesting problem. So that's still wide open. And then, and then in, the, in the paper, we look at uh, uh, Newton's method for the constrained problem, which you can think of as being related to um, uh, many techniques that are, uh, are quite often used in like sequential quadratic programming. And we can ask the question about, uh, you know, uh, have we got a radius theorem regarding uh, these uh, particular algorithms? And so uh, we can uh, look at uh, then information that appears in the perturbation function and uh, try to see indeed how much uh, uh, they get a bound on uh, 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 on the, uh, whether there's a neighborhood in which the iterations of the term problem starting at a point does not quadratically converge because the quadratic convergence of these particular methods are subject to often to uh, imposition of these second order optimality conditions. And this tries to quantify the role of those particular conditions in, uh, in uh, the, uh, the fast convergence of those algorithms. And so this was the, uh, paper that we, uh, we uh, published with uh, Terry and uh, was the seed for the uh, ASC grant that we tried to uh, bring a lot of people in on and tried to uh, get some, uh, uh, some interest in. And I, th I think this is a, an interesting line of work that Assam has left open to us to, to pursue that uh, indeed a lot of these uh, radius theorems and error bounds are often related to very fundamental quantities that appear in, uh, in theorems that relate to the performance of numerical methods. And so that in that sense, are fundamentally very applicable and very applied. Uh, so I'll uh, uh, think I've said my little uh, piece about my experiences with working with Sam. It was very enjoyable writing that paper. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, I thought Sam was 
a really fantastic person to work with, so very generous and, and such a lovely person. Um, and uh, it, it's such a shame that he's not here to contribute more and enrich our lives. So um, um, I'll uh, leave it there and, uh, and I'll invite now Alex to say a few words and to introduce some other people. Thank you, Andrew. I, I just want to add to what you just said that last week we also had a memorial session dedicated to Asen at the annual AUSTMS meeting. And at that session, we also discussed uh, radio serums in particular, among other things. So before continuing, uh, let me ask again, Terry, if, if you are here and if you are available, and if you want to say a few words live, uh, please uh, show up. Otherwise, we will move to recordings. Okay, uh, many thanks to Mira for joining us for, for this meeting, commemorating Asen Donchev, your father. And now we have a few recorded words for, from two other members of the Donchev family. And uh, let me try to share my screen. Uh, this one. And I am starting the same. Just in case, uh, can you see and hear this? We only see you. Ah, okay. This is not what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> definitely. Let me uh, restart it somehow. Okay. I expected it to appear on a different screen. Uh, this one. Uh, what about now? Yeah, it's good now. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kiko Donchev, and this is Finn Donchev, um, Asen's son, and this is his grandson. Uh, I'm honored to be able to say a couple words uh, for the conference. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's pretty amazing and special that uh, you guys have a whole session dedicated to my dad. I can tell you that he was extremely passionate about what he did. He was extremely passionate about uh, working uh, with uh, all of you and his colleagues. And he loved nothing more than well, maybe he loved fishing more, but he certainly, one of his top things was traveling um, and going to a conference to meet with his colleagues uh, and talk about all sorts of mathematics. We had to put Finn down is, for those of you that have had two-year-olds know that um, it's difficult to keep them seated in the same location for a while. Um, growing up, I got to go to many different places because of uh, my dad's passion for math um, and research and, and going to conferences and speaking to lots of different people. Um, I've been to Australia once, and that was, uh, I believe, for the same conference uh, that we're hosting now, but maybe maybe something different. We got the chance to experience Sydney um, and also go up to, to Cairns and do the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I won't ever forget uh, diving and snorkeling with him. My dad loved to snorkel, so any location he could go to snorkel, he was always a huge fan of. Um, beyond Australia, I went to all over the Caribbean, um, um, obviously all over Europe um, and, and many other places. And then beyond that, he went to Hong Kong, um, various spots in Asia. You get to go to the bottom in Ch of the world in Chile and almost Antarctica. Um, really just he was able to have incredible experiences. And one thing he taught me is, you know, we're not a family that meditates per se, uh, but when we were in nature and we were able to um, sort of enjoy moments um, in beautiful places with people, that's really when your brain got moving and you were able to brainstorm and sort of let your creative juices flow. 
um, in a way that they necessarily can't uh, when you're just sitting in a desk or in an office or, or in, in sort of the normal work environment. Um, I know that he thoroughly enjoyed socializing, even though my dad might say he's not like the biggest chit chatter. Um, when it came to socializing with other mathematics or mathematicians, though, it was it was really it was a pleasure of his. Um, you know, one of the sort of neat things, I mean, there's not that many great things, but it, when when he passed was just hearing all the stories, uh, meeting all the people and, and seeing how many different people he touched from all over the world. Um, it really, it warms my heart to know that he was such a big influence in the field um, and and is able to really uh, anchor himself to, or, or really, really inspire um, and, and do work that is meaningful to a lot of people and, and that makes a difference in the world, which is something he taught me. Um, you know, I sometimes struggle describing what I do to people, but I can tell you that uh, I never actually understood some of the theory or, or some of the control algorithms, even though I have my own engineering degree and, and study a lot of math and science. Um, however, I can tell you that the, the work you guys are doing is very instrumental to uh, my field, my industry in aerospace. Um, you know, we've learned how to basically land rockets because of um, the research that, uh, you know, optimal control has uh, enabled in terms of how we solve certain algorithms um, and how we how we re really create precision control and landing in um, in really high speed vehicles. So um, it's pretty neat to know that there's a connection there and that even though um, I may have gone into a little bit of a different field, uh, I stand on the shoulder of of him and all of the work that you guys do in this field. Um, and it's really preparing, you know, propelling the industry forward. Uh, definitely in aerospace, obviously in autonomous vehicles and, and any other sort of control um, sort of problem. So uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, we really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, don't be a stranger if you ever come to Florida or back to Ann Arbor. And uh, yeah, keep the work going because it, it's really, it's really, really important to the rest of the world. Okay. Uh, of course, Mira, please pass our thanks to Kiko for, for his words at our workshop. Uh, Kiko mentioned uh, being in Australia at some event, and he thought that it was uh, uh, a previous installment of this workshop. Uh, he's, he's not right about this. It actually happened quite, happened quite a while ago, as far as I understand. Uh, and our Wombat is only the sixth year in a row. Uh, but uh, it also means that he, he was a frequent visitor to our island. Uh, so that's why probably it was not difficult for him to join us again and again and for Wombats and for joint research, etc. Uh, I, I must say that uh, Kiko, he, he actually mentioned this in his presentation. He is not too far from what we are doing here. He's an aerospace engineer and involved in those rocket launches, uh, which we normally see on TV. And I know from Asen that uh, he was very proud of his children in particular of Kiko, and of course he loved his grandchildren, one of whom was presented on the oh. screen recently. Okay, uh, let me now switch to another presentation, and uh, it, now it is going to be Terry's uh, words about Asen, about his uh, habits, and also about the uh, joint research. Let me not make the same mistake again and share the right screen. Okay, this one and uh, memorial contribution. Can you see it? Okay. No, no, I actually can't see it.
Can you see it? No, we can't, Alex. Oh, again? <laughs> yes, still only see you. Okay, I would prefer <laughs> you to see Thierry. I will try to do something about it. I don't know why it works this way. I think I'm sharing this screen. Okay, but let me try sharing another screen. This one. And no. This. How about now? Yes. Okay. Let me start from the beginning. This is Terry Rockefeller. I want to tell you something about the uh, special qualities of Ascend that I know from the long relationship we've had together, stretching back almost 50 years. But uh, uh, mathematics was a very important part of it. We were collaborators and co-authors well, there are other sides of it too. Despite an age difference of 13 years, he and I became such very close friends. And not only close friends, but partners in countless adventures. I will show you some pictures of that. In this, in this first picture, uh, we see something rather typical, at least it seems on the surface, of what mathematicians do. They go to conferences and they give talks. Uh, and there's something special about this one though, because this is uh, the last time that Asen and I were together at the same conference. And this was in December of 2018 in Hong Kong. And he's giving a talk about a topic that we both have been working on and uh, so forth. But the the point about this is, is that uh, uh, mathematics and our, our, our co-authorship and our joint research was a sort of engine and vehicle for us getting together a lot, but it also led to a lot of uh, circumstances. So here we are in Hong Kong, and that's his talk. But then the next day, here we are on a ferry going over to Hong Kong Island itself from Kowloon in order to walk to the top of uh, Victoria Peak and uh, take some trails through the blooming um, uh, camellias that are up there. And there's another special thing about this because uh, whenever Asen and I were traveling somewhere, we uh, would usually get together in his room before dinner to share some drink from the supply he always had on hand. And what was funny about it in this case was that he was on the 23rd floor of the hotel and I was in the 18th floor of the hotel and it had, had these high tech elevators that would only stop at the floor for which a room key was at. So the only way I could go up to his room was by climbing five flights of stairs through a kind of ugly concrete service section of the hotel. Now, Another side of all this uh, mathematics and collaboration, which starts to get into adventure, is this little cabin, which is in a mountain town in the south of Argentina, Bariloche. And uh, this is a cabin some retired man built in his backyard. And in the, uh, Asen and I ended up staying in this cabin for 10 days, working on our book on implicit functions and mappings. And as part of that, we took the hikes. Some of these hikes, in this case, they got in almost way over our head. We didn't know what we were doing. We took a loop hike and we ended up at a mountain refuge at a lake. And it was pretty fantastic anyway. Now, other, other times we had as adventures in South America. Here's another one. This is at a more famous place, at Torres del Paine uh, National Park and the towers themselves. And to get there, you have to go by hours, including long time on gravel roads in your rented car from the airport. Then, in this case, you have to hike and spend the night. Here's how we spent the night. This was a backpacking trip in Patagonia, and that's our, our tent. We'll come back to this location at the very end, and you'll see why. Here's something else, a different adventure. Here's a scent. Look how happy it is. he is. This is in the far tip of south tip of Chile near Cape Horn. We're in the Beagle Channel looking at a glacier on the south end of uh, Tierra del Fuego Island. And you can see the raindrops on the screen. This is not a place known for its great weather, let me say. 
Who's happy? Los Angeles is very happy. All right, now let's switch to a different kind of thing. Here's something going back to 20 years ago, more robust times. There's a San with Dora, of course, having a drink too, but they're on a beach at uh, the property I had acquired around that time at Windby Island, and we're, of course, having a wonderful time. But this was just part of all the many visits. Most of the visits, though, that Asen had uh, uh, to the Northwest, of course, they were always revolving also about writing and doing our research. But I'm not going to show you the writing and the research. I'm going to show the other side. Here's one, for example. Here we are on a five-day trip. And, and there he is with his son, Kiko, and me. And there's another young man. He's the son of a friend of mine and a collaborator in Florida who was coming every summer to do backpacking and hiking. And uh, here we are. This is like two days from the car. And we have days to go. And, of course, there's a lake here. We always have to have lakes. There's another high time. We're having a high time here, and there's... Not only Asen and me, but uh, his, his daughter Mira and his son Kiko. And in the middle is my final PhD student, Rafael Gebel, who is from Poland, and his wife Diane, an American, and their little daughter, just practically just born, who now, though, is as tall as they are and is a, an accomplished rock climber on her own. And then many of the things I did with Asen were just, uh, just he and I did them. Here's a place, for example, that we went to more than once in different seasons. One of the seasons we went to on the, on the trail uh, there, between that and the car, we got an enormous treasure. Now look at this, look at a sense face here. And you see the pure joy of fun, absolute love of nature. He had already, these are uh, King Boldy mushrooms. Uh, they're among the most prized of all mushrooms. And we had such a huge haul. And we had spent an hour cutting them all up. And this was hardly the product. What fun, what joy. You can't get far from fishing for the sand. So here's another time when if the sand is, is hiking, we're in, in, the, in the, uh, the mountains east of Seattle where there are many, many lakes. And uh, we're often traveling without any trail, just uh, going from lake to lake. And, uh, and you can see he's wearing shorts and he doesn't have his sleeves covered, even though you see snow in the background. But that's the character of these lakes. The, lake takes, the ice takes forever to melt. In the meantime, the temperature is not bad. And here he is putting together his fishing pole. Another case here, this is at least two days away from a car and, and any formal trail. We're just exploring around endlessly. And of course, catching fish leads to having to clean the catch. There he is cleaning his trout in a natural sink. He just loved to do that. He never mind following up with cleaning the fish after he caught them. And of course, then grilling, him, grilling them over a camp stove. Other, other fun, other mountain fun. No end to all this mountain fun. But to wind up, this is the way I like to think of a sense. Happy, out in nature, thinking, he's probably thinking mathematics and fish at the same time. As long as we're not too far from some lake. And having some kind of challenge. Finally, I want to show you this. He was always ready for the happy time at the end of the day. And I'd like to think of him in this case as wishing a life as lucky as his. OK, it seems to be the end. Stop sharing. So thank you, Terry, if you are here and can hear us for sharing your memories. Uh, I must say, of course, uh, Terry's memories are probably the longest of all, he, of all Ascent's colleagues. But uh, I, I want to add that uh, many people can share similar memories about Ascent like thinking about mathematics and about fishing at the same time. Sam was indeed good at, at that. So 
So we are continuing with our program, and uh, I believe now uh, Vladimir can add a few words about Terry. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, first, uh, I'll correct you. It will be not about Terry. It will be about the sun. It is about the sun <laughs> story for making this mistake. Uh, yeah. Um, good evening to everybody in Sydney, and good morning to the Europeans who participate in this meeting. Thank you all for attending uh, this session devoted, dedicated to the memory of Hassan. Now I'll try to share the screen, and uh, in the same time I'll switch off my camera because otherwise you will be watching only the ceiling of my room. Uh, so, okay. I hope you, you see now. Yes, we can, we see it. Um, just, uh, a short moment. Something Did happened it? here. While you are fixing what, what's happened, uh, I'm just commenting that we, we can again yeah, see the please, smiling please. face of us then. Uh, do, do you need help, Vladimir? So this is no, I, winter I time, I guess. I think it will be okay now. So you, you see the, the slide. I, Yes, we do. I just cannot switch off my camera. But it doesn't create any problems. So we, we see yeah. your slides and we see you. That's yeah, okay. then, okay, it doesn't create problems, but then you will see all the time the ceiling in my room. This is the ceiling because I put my computer horizontally. So. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Okay, uh, but that, nice that ceiling, no problem. Okay. No leakage. Uh, well, uh, I had the chance to work uh, with uh, Sam for more than 45 years. Uh, in some periods more intensively, in some other periods less. Uh, but uh, in any case, I have closely followed and have good knowledge of his scientific production. And uh, for this reason, I propose to Alex and to Andrew to give a talk about the scientific contributions of Hassan. But soon later, I figured out how difficult was my job because, because of a simple reason. Hassan has so many contributions, too many in several areas of optimization and mathematical analysis, so that even a short mentioning is impossible in half an hour. Um, so I will focus only on scientific part of uh, Hassan's activities. Uh, but uh, because of the reasons I mentioned, I decided to just briefly mention the areas in which he has worked, uh, focusing on two selected particular papers by Asen, and which I will present with some more details. And uh, Moreover, as I choose this work so that uh, they are not uh, exactly in the focus of this conference, so that most of you will probably not know them. Uh, I would split the a sense uh, scientific uh, 
work in three periods. The first period is that of his PhD study in Warsaw and also of his work afterwards in Sofia in Bulgaria. In Warsaw, he st started with uh, the topic of sensitivity analysis in optimization with the main focus on optimal control, which uh, you know very well what uh, it, does it mean. And as a uh, natural continuation, he then in, in Sofia uh, continued with uh, investigating singular perturbations uh, in optimal control. And uh, also in a paper which uh, is not uh, quite well known, but uh, it's from the early 80s, uh, he established uh, a very uh, strong connection, even equivalence, uh, in a some sense between convergence of approximations to optimal control problems and, uh, and convergence of the solutions with respect to a parameter, regular parameter in the problems. And uh, this observation actually is a leading line of his further research as well, uh, which continued actually and uh, culminated in, in, in his uh, works on convergence analysis and error analysis based on uh, sub metric subregularity of mappings. And another topic which uh, is persistent uh, in a sense research is that of uh, a pro interpolation of uh, data on the plane <clears throat> using uh, restricted classes of functions. The first work was with uh, convex interpolation with convex functions. And uh, his uh, work in this period uh, resulted in the first, uh, his book, the first book he wrote, and also partly in the second book, which will appear uh, later on. But now I will talk a little about uh, one of a sense works uh, from 83, published in SICOM, uh, which was uh, in the area of singular perturbations. I'll tell you, I will tell you later why I chose this work. It's about uh, a Meyer type problem for a singularly perturbed linear system. Here, lambda is presumably a small parameter so that uh, the y part of the state, the y variables can, uh, can move fastly. They're called fast variables. Um, and uh, the matrix A4 of T for every T has only eigenvalues with uh, negative real parts. And the control U is bounded in a set. So what happens here is that the celebrated Tikhonov theorem claims that for every fixed control function U of T, let's say continuous or piecewise continuous, the solution of this uh, system converges in a quite a good sense to the solution of the system, which we obtain by formally taking here lambda equal to zero. And let me explain what happens actually on the following simple example. This is a scalar equation uh, and uh, the fast system, the fast state has uh, dimension two. And uh, think about uh, optimization of uh, on the set of endpoints of this uh, control system. Here U is the control function. Uh, so we want to minimize the function depending on X and T, where X and T uh, are allowed to vary on the reachable set of this control system. K lambda, it depends on lambda. So what is suggested by the Tikhonov theorem is to set here lambda equal to zero and then from the resulting algebraic equation we obtain a relation between y1 and y2 and the control and this is this relation so we can substitute uh, y in the slow 
equation and obtain a very simple control system, this one here, the reachable set of which is obvious. And then we can reduce uh, formally the problem that we started with to the problem of minimizing the first function G on a set which is a product of two sets, the reachable set of this simple control system, which is obvious, and Y belongs to the set of those uh, uh, pairs, Y1, Y2, which satisfy these relations here. So it is a set which is uh, just a line segment. But uh, it turns out that this, uh, this uh, re reduced problem actually does not provide a correct limit problem for the one with lambda positive. Uh, and uh, what we do in this paper is to find the Hausdorff limit of this uh, set depending on lambda, when lambda converges to zero. And it turns out that it's a matter of very simple calculation that every student in control theory can perform, that the limit is uh, indeed the product of two sets, but uh, the second one in the Y space is not just a line segment, but it is this body here uh, defined, bounded by two parabolas. And uh, this is a very simple observation, which uh, leads to the following correct limit problem. In this paper, of course, uh, all this is presented in the general case that I started with, but uh, the I, main idea, and this is the reason uh, because of which uh, I talk about this result and the reason for which this is the most quoted paper by Asen in the field of singular perturbations among uh, more than 20 papers that he has in the singular perturbation area is that uh, this uh, simple idea creates, creates a new, conceptually new approach in investigation of singularly perturbed control systems, namely to find the correct limit problem, no matter whether it coincides or differs from the formal reduction, from the one obtained by formal reduction. And this approach proved to be very productive in later years and led to involvement of occupational measures, uh, controls, and so on. Maybe many of you know uh, the works of uh, Zvi Archstein and uh, certainly of uh, Geitzgori in that direction. So this uh, was uh, what I wanted to say about the singular perturbation area. Now, the next period uh, is the uh, first uh, his period, so to say, uh, in the United States. Here, I will be very brief. Uh, I just uh, read uh, shortly what uh, I wrote here. Inverse uh, mapping theorem, simplicit function theorems, Lipschitz stability, nonlinear optimization, and still the error analysis of discretizations in optimal control. It's always present in, in his uh, work. And uh, the last uh, topic, uh, which uh, had before the form of uh, convex interpolations uh, of data, now is extended to interpolation of data on a strip so that uh, the interpolant uh, lies on a strip. Uh, the next book is mentioned here, which uh, I think all of you know. Uh, I have a particular paper to mention also in this uh, in 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 this uh, part of uh, his uh, research. Uh, just uh, uh, I, I look at my watch and I see that I have a few may 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 spend a few minutes on that. Uh, this is a paper which was uh, in some form published in the Proceeding of the American Mathematical Society, and uh, this was about implicit, about uh, inverse function theorems, and uh, then by Asen in another in mathematical programming about um, 
Im, Im, implicit, implicit function theorem. So uh, it, it is about uh, inclusion, generalized equation, I, as we say, uh, depending on a parameter P, X is in a Banach space. So sigma of P is the set of solutions of this inclusion. It depends on uh, P, of course. And in parallel, uh, we consider another inclusion, another function G here instead of F, uh, where the parameter is only on the right hand side. So uh, if we do not by DF set the set of solutions, that is the inverse mapping actually of this map uh, here, uh, then uh, it turns out, and this is the continuation in a sense of uh, works of uh, Robinson, uh, it turns out that uh, if uh, the mapping uh, D has a certain uh, properties uh, uh, of uh, a list of such is uh, written here, uh, then these properties are inherited uh, by, by the solution of the uh, parameterized uh, uh, inclusion sigma. And uh, provided that uh, the function G uh, is a, a appropriate approximation of uh, the function F, and this um, appropriateness means in, it is in the sense of Robinson. It's uh, written here. I will not go into details, but I mention only that uh, F does not need to be a differentiable function for that. And the properties uh, that uh, remain inherited from the, this simple uh, inclusion to the solution set of the more complicated, depending on parameter here, of course, this should be P, uh, not uh, Y. Um, these properties are uh, like uh, having so pseudo Lipschitz uh, selection or uh, being a pseudo Lipschitz or uh, having Lipschitz selection and one more, a local single valued and Lipschitz to, to be locally single valued in Lipschitz. And uh, this work uh, of course has a uh, continuations uh, and uh, they, they're, it is closely related to the Lusterne Graves theorems uh, on which uh, Sen was working later on together with Terry, and uh, it has a very, very strong impact because of its uh, application, and the applications were actually in all the other areas in which uh, Hassan has worked in this, uh, in this period, all these areas, especially also for the discret discretizations of optimal control problems. And uh, the third and longest uh, period in the science work, uh, uh, I will very quickly just uh, mention the main directions, strong metric regularity and metric regularity of mappings to Sterling Graves theorems. Uh, these were uh, very intensively also applied in the studies of uh, Newton and Kertorovich like methods. Sen has a uh, several, maybe seven, eight papers on, on, on this issue for variational inequalities, generalized equations or non-smooth problems, and also for shape preserving interpolations. Uh, Lipschitz stability in mathematical programming and optimal control. Uh, the discrete approximation is present, but from a somewhat different point of view, I will say what is it more precisely about radius uh, theorems, radius of regularity. Andrew uh, was uh, talking about this topic, also one of the uh, favorite topics of Hassan. And uh, in the past uh, four or five years, um, maybe many of you know that Hassan was adjunct professor at the University of Michigan at the Department of uh, Aerospace Engineering. And uh, because of this, and he was uh, very much interested uh, in the topic of model predictive control, uh, but not only because of this, uh, also because of the 
very uh, obvious importance of uh, the results uh, in uh, the field of metric regularity and loose turning graves uh, for the analysis of uh, the model predictive control method. And uh, if I will talk a bit more about uh, one of uh, his papers, maybe uh, the, one of the last papers uh, of Hassan published uh, last year. Uh, before that, I just mentioned the book that we very well know, the book with Terry, and uh, also the book uh, which Hassan wrote uh, during the last year of uh, his life, uh, which will appear in Springer this uh, early next year. So let me now uh, focus on the particular contribution of Hassan, uh, which uh, is the analysis of the model predictive control algorithm. So we consider uh, here, let us consider a Lagrange problem of minimization of integral functional. We have a control system with control U and state function X and constraint controls. And uh, here, the initial time tau and the initial state x0, x tau at time tau are considered as a parameters, but there is another parameter function, parameter of function p of t. Uh, and what we actually, uh, our goal actually is to solve the, this problem for a particular reference uh, value of the parameter function p hat for initial time zero and for initial point x zero. Uh, we want to do this, but um, the in conditions of uncertainty, namely the reference parameter p hat is not known. And also the initial uh, state x zero does not need to be known. So what is the model predictive control algorithm uh, applied to this particular a problem because usually the model predictive control is uh, associated with uh, stabilization problems, but here we deal with uh, optimal control problem on a finite horizon. It's something very simple, uh, most of you probably know, uh, and very think that uh, everybody is practicing in the everyday life uh, and also the uh, firms in economics and uh, uh, the uh, in process control if in, in the industry uh, are using this this approach this algorithm in one or another form namely uh, we make a prediction for the future of the our environment then take a decision what to do in the next uh, next uh, let's say week uh, and to start to implement our decision but after a while we figure out that uh, our prediction was not correct, we make another prediction and then our, we correct our plans and implement the new plans for the rest of the time. So this is the model predictive control. Formally, uh, we consider uh, for simplicity, a uniform mesh with uh, step length H uh, and uh, I'll define the uh, control generated by the model predictive control method inductively assuming that it is already defined on zero tk and implemented to the real system real system is assumed to be the system with the parameter p hat that we do not know uh, so we measure the state of the real system at time tk with some error and obtain vector k zero we make a new prediction of the uh, true parameter p hat for the remaining part of the horizon. And then we solve the problem that we uh, had formulated here, the problem with, with the P and uh, X uh, K zero, the vector that we have found at time T K. We solve it with some error. Yeah, let's say said tilde, I don't make precise what is the error. But what we do is to implement the optimal control for this problem, U tilde, to implement only on the time horizon TK to TK plus one, and then measure again and repeat this procedure again and again till the end. 
So I'll pr present immediately what is the result of this paper, one of the results, because there are one more, uh, just to get impression of the, of the spirit. Um, will you not by you had the op optimal open loop solution of the, uh, of the reference problem. So this is the solution that we would have obtained if we knew exactly uh, p hat, the reference uh, parameter, and also the initial state. And uh, then uh, it is claimed that the L1 norm of the difference between the model predictive control uh, 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 the control obtained by the model predictive control method and the optimal open loop control can be estimated by this expression where H is, uh, I remind you, the step length, the frequency, let's say, giving the frequency at which we take measurements. And uh, the, the other term is the average of the errors we have, the observation error and the uh, computational error and the error in the prediction. Uh, it is uh, what is important is uh, that the error in the uh, solution model predictive control solution uh, is uh, de depends on the average errors, not on the on the uh, maximal of the errors that we make. And this is the strength of the method. Uh, what are the assumptions? This is uh, something that is important. Uh, A1 and A2 are uh, standard assumptions of some smoothness of the data and the existence of solutions of the optimal control problems that appear. But A3 is something special. Uh, many of you know that the system of first order necessary optimality conditions, the Pontryagin maximum principle, can be written in such a form where Y is the triple of the uh, state, cost state, and control. And uh, this is not F, this should be phi. Yeah. And the phi is uh, a set valued map, which uh, here the single valued part depends on the, uh, is written in terms of Hamiltonian associated with the co control problem. And, and the multi valued part here contains the normal cone to the control constraining set the set of feasible controls, better to say. And the condition is that uh, this mapping phi is uh, strongly metrically subregular at the point y hat and zero. Uh, as you see, uh, we do not uh, explicitly formulate requirements in terms of the data uh, to obtain this uh, convergence and error estimate result we rely on the property of strong metric subregularity. And this is important because if you, I'll skip here one part, uh, just saying that a sufficient condition for this property of strong metric subregularity is, is known from a paper by Asan and uh, Bill Hager uh, from the early 90s. And this is the so-called uh, strong coercivity condition, uh, where the coercivity is in L2. Uh, but uh, actually, this condition for strong subregularity was improved several times during the years. And uh, the, the advantage of having formulated our theorem in the terms of uh, uh, regularity of the solution map, this condition, is that these improvements in the sufficient condition for strong regularity, they do not affect the formulation of the theorem. The theorem remains the same. And uh, just at the end, uh, I will mention that uh, this condition that I just uh, here uh, described, I mentioned the coercivity condition, it requires uh, uh, it requires that the uh, that the uh, the Hamiltonian is strongly convex with respect to the control, even some some more something more. In any case, 
this condition is not uh, not in, not uh, fulfilled for affine problems where uh, the, the dependence on the control is uh, affine. Um, and this uh, work that I mentioned was extended very recently by me and uh, two of my PhD students uh, so that uh, it covers also the, uh, the affine case, uh, but the cursivity condition is a sort of cursivity in the space L1, not in L2. I say this uh, last uh, uh, remark about the extension just uh, to uh, show that uh, science ideas uh, are still alive. They developed and uh, give new results. And I think that uh, there will appear many uh, such future indirect uh, contributions uh, by, by him, by his uh, co co-workers and friends. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vladimir, for sharing your memories and also to, um, for emphasizing the breadth of interests of ASEAN. So it's good to know that people are continuing all these directions and we might expect more new interesting results in all these areas. So now uh, I guess it is Michelle's turn to share his memories and to give his presentation uh, on topics related to, to our sense interests. We Can still can't see, see, no. Michel Tirach has started screen sharing, but nothing has appeared yet. Oh, I see nothing. No. Try again, please. Still nothing, Michel. Oh. Check what exactly you are sharing. I want to share uh, my screen, my first screen. I don't see. Do you see something? No. Not yet. <sighs> we tried the, the other day, it was working. The other day it was working. Today it's Wednesday. New day, new rules, new problems. I uh, tried. Share the screen. Share the screen. And it offers and you several then, options how you share the screen. Check I carefully what you choose. Well, I see my slide, and then when I take a... At least you see your slides. Yeah. We don't, we don't. Uh, have you sent me your presentation? I see, I think. Ah, shall I share your presentation? If you cannot, uh, if I try again last time. Okay. Share. And now. Oh, success. Go ahead, Michel. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay? Yeah, 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 it's okay. Excellent. Works? Okay. Yep, perfect. Go ahead. The main problem okay. has been solved. Okay. Uh, 
Good morning, uh, for the friend in Australia, and uh, a good evening, sorry, for the friend <laughs> in Australia, and good morning for the friend in Europe. Uh, first of all, thank you for your invitation to talk to this uh, special session dedicated to Hassan. It is uh, with a great emotion that I will attempt to give a presentation on some results published in an article some years ago, a joint article with Hassan and uh, Samir Aldi. And uh, then I will uh, say a few words about a work in progress on an issue that Hassan has been interested in together with two other uh, collaborators and in particular with Vladimir Velyov. I believe that my first meeting uh, with Hassan go back to the period where I attended some conference, for instance, in Varna in Bulgaria. And of course in Italy, when at the time he had this strong cooperation with uh, uh, Tullio Zolezzi. Uh, and uh, as uh, Vladimir reminded, he wrote a very nice book on the web post optimization problem in 1993 with Tullio. Also, he was uh, very often invited in Italy uh, to this uh, workshop organized mainly by uh, Roberto Lucchetti, and uh, I was uh, attending some of his workshops uh, uh, there at this time. So now uh, I want to talk about, uh, as I said, two mathematical memories. I mean, among many others, oh, no. our late colleague and friend, Asen Donchev. And uh, during the talk, I have several collaborators, S Samir Ali, of course, Hassan, Mindao, and uh, Hassan Saud. In the first part, I will talk about uh, an extension of Lim's theorem and its application. In the second part, I, wa I will speak about the Donchev Pastel value of result about locating omega, omega limit sets for solutions of differential inclusion with not necessarily continuous run side. An extension to a differential inclusion governed by a maximally monotone operator. To my colleagues, remember Hassan's smile, Hassan's legacy, and Hassan's deep contribution to mathematics. To Hassan's wife, Dora, to Hassan's kids, Miran, Kiko, and all, to all his family, please accept my deepest sympathy. Okay, the first part is a resume of a joint paper with Samir and Hassan, published uh, some years ago in 2014. Uh, the title of uh, this uh, paper is on one side of Lipschitz stability of self valued contractions. So it starts with the theorem by Lim. So theorem by Lim is the following. If you take uh, an arbitrary complete metric space X rho, rho is the matrix, and phi one and phi two, two set valued mappings uh, with value into the family of non empty closed space X. And we suppose that phi one and phi two are Lipschitz continuous with the same Lipschitz constant lambda between zero and one, strictly less than one. Then the Hausdorff distance with respect to the matrix rho between the fixed point of phi one and the fixed point of 
phi two phi two is bounded above from above by one over one minus lambda, the supremum over all of x of the out of distance between phi one of x and phi two of x. This is the Lim theorem. And this is a basic uh, result in uh, set value analysis. And from this theorem of Lim, we can deduce uh, Nadler's fixed point theorem very easily. I remember that the Nadler fixed point theorem says the following. Again, we are in a complete metric setting. X is a metric space, rho the distance, and phi, a set value mapping from X to the subset of X. And uh, with non empty closed values, and it satisfies the following this property uh, involving the host of distance. There exists some lambda strictly between zero and one, such that whenever X and Y are in X, the Hausdorff distance between phi of X and phi of Y is bounded above from lambda the distance between X and Y. If this property is satisfied, then phi has a fixed point, which means that there is some U in X such that U belongs to phi of U. Okay, but there was several generalization of Nadler, Nadler's theorem, some of more interest than others. But an important one is the local version due to Hassan and Hager. And the result from, Dutch, from Hassan and Hager is the following. Suppose you have a complete metric space and phi, a set value mapping uh, from X to X. And we suppose that for some X bar in X and some alpha circuit positive, the graph of phi intersection, intersection with the ball, open ball, at X bar with this alpha times the open ball uh, X bar is a closed set. And for some lambda strictly between zero and one, the following condition holds. The distance between X and phi of X is less than equal to alpha one minus lambda times one minus lambda. And the excess uh, of phi of phi of x intersection the open ball uh, at x bar with phi of y is less than rho lambda rho, the distance between x and y for all x and y in the open ball uh, centered at x bar. If these two property holds, then phi has a fixed point in the ball p x bar alpha. And this result is a local version since it ignores the behavior of phi at point that are far from a prescribed point x bar. OK? Uh, remember that the excess of uh, when you have two, uh, two sets, the excess of c over d is a supremum over all x in x of the distance from x to d. Okay, so in this paper with uh, Samir and uh, Hassan, we prove a, a generalization of Tim's lemma, which is the following. X is, also, is always a complete metric space, phi one, and phi two, um, phi one and phi two are two set value mapping with value into the family of non empty closed set always. And we suppose that phi one and phi two are Lipschitz continuous with the same Lipschitz constant lambda. Then 
we prove that the excess of the fixed point of phi i over the fixed point of phi g is bounded from above by one over one minus lambda, the superbum over all x in x of the excess of phi i over phi j. And for all e and j uh, from one to two. Ah. ah, something happens. I cannot go further. Ah, okay, it works now. In the same paper also, we prove another result, a global version of the Lusterni graves theorem. The result was the following. Uh, X is a complete metric space, Y is a Banach space. And uh, we consider two mappings of phi and psi, self-value mapping from X to Y. And we suppose that phi is globally metrically regular with constant kappa and psi if this is continuous on Y with constant mu. Uh, and uh, we suppose that uh, kappa times mu is strictly less than one. Then the distance for, of x from the inverse of phi plus c at y is less than or equal to kappa one minus k mu, kappa mu, the distance from y to phi plus, plus psi of x for all x and y in x times y in the product space x times y. Also, another result in this paper is estimates, uh, is estimates uh, of fixed point of composition. Now, kappa and mu are two non-negative constants uh, satisfying kappa nu strictly less than one. And we consider a set value mapping f from y to x with closer than normality graph. And we suppose that the projection onto x of the graph of f is complete. Then the following are equivalent. The mapping f is Lipschitz continuous on y with constant kappa. For any mapping j from x to y with closer graph, which is Lipschitz continuous with constant mu, and such that the projection of the graph of j onto y is complete, the following property holds the distance from x to the fixed point of the composition of f with j is less than equal to kappa one over minus kappa mu, the distance of f minus one of x to j of x, for every x in x. Okay, it was the, the things I wanted to say about uh, this, uh, this result obtained on the only paper I had the chance to uh, write with uh, Asen Donchev. And it was a great experience for me and also for Samir. Now I want to speak about another topics, about the Donchev Pastanov Belyov uh, uh, result. Uh, this is a paper which has appeared in Analysis and Geometry in Control and uh, its applicated theory and its application. And it is about omega limit sets for differential inclusions. So the framework is the following. They, they suppose the following inclusion, x dot of t belongs to f of x of t with the initial uh, value x of t zero equal x dot. Omega x naught is the omega limit set associated to this uh, equation, differential inclusion one. It is a collection of points in Rn, the setting is in Rn for each of which there exists a characteristic solution, phi 
dot t t zero x zero of the equation one, the final and bounded on the interval t zero plus infinity and the sequence t k converges to plus infinity, such that phi, phi t k t zero x zero tends to y as k tends to plus infinity. And uh, for the understanding, I have to of the what we follow. I need to recall the concept of a per Dini derivative of a Lipschitz continuous function v from R n to R in the direction d, which is defined by this formula d plus v of at x in the direction d is the limb sub when t tends to zero of the quotient of v x plus t d minus v x over t. Okay. Now. Aston, Krastanov, and Vladimir, uh, under the standing assumption, which is the following, for every t pair t0, x0 in R times Rn, there exists the positive reals R and M such that f of t at x is bounded in norms by M for every x in the open ball with an, at centered at x naught and with radius r for every t greater than t0. And they prove in 2015, so the following result, let s be a closed subset of rn, u be a relatively open subset of s, relative respect to s, V be a locally Lipschitz real valued function defined on open set J containing S and uh, W, a real valued lower semi continuous function defini defined on the set Z, uh, G uh, set minus S, the union with U. Given the pair t0 x not in Rn fixed, we so consider the initial value problem one, okay? And suppose that the following condition hold, P1, for every epsilon strictly positive and each bounded solution, phi of one, there exists T such that the distance from, A, from phi, phi T, T not, x0 to s is less than epsilon for every t greater than t, capital T. Wx is strictly positive for every x in u and the following inequality holds. Uh, this is a, a majoration of the uh, derivative uh, at v at x in the direction v. It is bounded from above by minus Wx for every z x in z. And the last condition was every open interval contained in the image of s minus u by v as a non empty intersection with v of u. And in this, under all these assumptions, the standing assumption and b1, b2, b3, and b4, uh, they prove that. The omega limit set omega x0 is included in S minus u. Okay, now we are interested, uh, we were interested recently in the extension of uh, these results to maximally volatile operators. In fact, we are interested in uh, the following problem x dot of t belongs to f of f of t minus a of x of t almost everywhere uh, with the initial condition that x naught x zero be equal x naught belongs to the closure of the domain of the operator A. And uh, in this uh, situation, A is a maximally monotone operator defined on Rn. F is a Lipschitz continuous function defined on the closure of the domain of A. And uh, for fixed, for fixed T and X zero in the closure of the domain, there exists a unique absolutely continuous function 
x dot of x zero from zero t the interval zero capital of t into Rn uh, with x dot in uh, L infinity log and uh, for all t so t positive x t of x dot uh, belongs to the domain of A such that uh, this is a solution of course of the problem P. Special case is of this kind of problem is when A is a subdifferential of an external real valued lower semi-continuous function. Okay, then it gives rise to this uh, uh, equation five. And uh, when A is a normal code to a closed set, uh, we have as a special case uh, this equation six. Okay. Uh, Michel, uh, excuse me, five minutes left. Okay. Now, the omega limit set, set to a problem P uh, with initial condition is given in other words by this formula in red. Okay. Omega zero is a set of this point that can be a little bit of sub trajectory. Okay. They play a crucial role in the study of stability theory, more precisely in LaSalle in various principles. And the uh, omega limit set is considered as a small set that a solution approach. Okay, so I have some uh, notation uh, quickly. Uh, the set of extended real proper lower semi-continuous function, uh, I denote by S phi plus uh, the set of x in S such that f of phi of x is strictly positive, and the set S in uh, domain of A is invariant set uh, respect to P when it satisfies this condition. Okay, x zero. Okay, and now I have the concept of Frechet proximal, etc. So differential, and uh, now. The aim of the result I want to, uh, to show you uh, quickly is to provide a locating result for the problem P by using the local boldness of a maximally monotone operator on the, on the interior of its domain, if it is non-empty. Okay, thus so the boldness of the multifunction imposed in Don Chef and all is covered and the lower semi-continuous Lyapunov pair type. We have, uh, as uh, in the paper by uh, Don Chef and his collaborator, we have some blanket assumption, which are assumption one, two, and three, okay, uh, which are given. Uh, and uh, under these assumptions, we were able to prove that if x dot in the closure of the domain of the operator, and uh, if we suppose that the corresponding solution, x dot of x zero of p is bounded, and that for all x in the domain of w, this inequality holds. If for all x in the domain of v, this v of x is a limit in of VW when W tends to X in the domain of the operator A, the set, the image of the set S plus W, the set of X where W of X is strictly positive. So image by V minus this set is dense in V of S plus W, then we have a location of the omega minimum set. It is included in S minus S plus W. Okay, uh, we have, uh, we can uh, add some other consequences, but I have no time to speak about them. And uh, uh, finally, uh, as uh, I will say, just one corollary, 
if uh, V uh, is a lower subcontinuous function in Rn, define an open neighborhood of S, and uh, if the assumption two and three uh, given before are satisfied, okay, uh, for this set S plus W, uh, we have that the omega limit set is included in S uh, minus S plus W. And uh, furthermore, uh, it is contained in a connected component of S uh, minus S plus W. Okay. And uh, I thank you very much. Uh, uh, next time, I will take more time to. to develop uh, more uh, these results. Uh, the time was short and I have many things to say. Thank you for the organizer, to the organizer and to the audience. And there you have a nice picture of Hassan uh, giving a talk uh, in, uh, I think it was in Ballarat. Yes, it was in Ballarat indeed. Always, uh, all roads lead to Ballarat, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And now I think uh, Samir, Samir Adli is uh, going to share with us his memories. Samir's name was mentioned several times during today's presentation. And I believe uh, Samir can claim uh, Asen to be his friend and, of course, collaborator. So please, Samir, 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Alex, I, could you please allow me to share my slides? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Try now. Okay, continue. Do you see my slides? Yes, we do. Okay, great. University of Limoges, France. <laughs> yes. Please join us. Okay, please. Thank you very much, uh, Alex, for giving me the, the opportunity to say a few words about uh, Asen. Uh, I met uh, Asen for the first time. I was still a PhD student. He was uh, uh, visiting our department of mathematics uh, with several colleagues from the, uh, the Bulgarian Academy of Science. I can say, for example, uh, Julian Rewalski, Peter Kenderov. They were invited by Michel. And at that time, I was still a PhD student. And uh, the first thing that uh, struck me was his modesty, mathematical, scientifically and mathematically and human being. So as a PhD student, he asked me uh, on which area I'm working on. And I told him uh, variational inequalities. And uh, I told him uh, that I have a paper that just finished and I don't know where uh, to submit this paper. So Asen asked me uh, to, uh, to go to the seminar room. Uh, I think that Michel still remember our seminar room in the, the mathematical department. Uh, and uh, I told me, please explain me on the blackboard what is the deep and original idea that you have in this paper. <laughs> I felt a lot of pressure uh, since I was not prepared for that. Uh, at the end, he said uh, to me, uh, fine, just submit this paper to Serdica. Okay, it took uh, almost, as you see here, one year for the acceptance. It was a rigorous uh, review process since the paper I submitted in the March 7, 1995, as you see here, and it was uh, accepted in February 1996. So from the uh, I don't have, unfortunately, some pictures of that time. Uh, so I can say that our friendship uh, never ceased since that uh, time. He visited me in Limoges, and I also I visit, uh, visited him in Ann Arbor many times. 
This is one of the most beautiful picture that I took uh, from uh, Asen. We was together in, uh, in uh, Suzupol. It was in June uh, 2013. So he came uh, to meet me at the airport uh, in Sofia to travel together from Sofia to Suzupol. Uh, I never forgot what uh, he told me at the airport. He told me exactly the following sentence, here you are the rich French and I am the poor Bulgarian. <laughs> this is, he told me what they call maybe uh, the Bulgar Skarabuta. Uh, Asen always used this, uh, this sentence, which means this is uh, a Bulgarian style. Okay. After that, this is Asen in the Suzopol. We traveled and uh, swam together uh, in the Black Sea. As you see here also, he was very happy to show me all uh, the area because when he was uh, 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 a kid with his father, he told me a lot of souvenirs with his father in this area. And this is uh, a picture when I visited him in uh, 2014. He took me several times to, to hike. Uh, and here uh, also you see how Asen was happy to show me all these uh, hikes uh, around the, 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 the Michigan lakes. So uh, also, as you know, Asen like uh, also fishing and uh, has a boat. I, I, I was very uh, uh, happy to share with him uh, uh, some uh, fishing in the, 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 the Michigan lakes. And uh, this is uh, uh, another, another picture in the uh, Watson Lake when uh, we can fish and talk mathematics with Asen. At that time, uh, the, the discussion was about the metric regularity and uh, uh, Asen, you look, look how, how, how happy he is when he got fish. Uh, I took this picture with him. He, he prepared many sandwiches for me to go to, 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 to fish together. So I think that our uh, community has lost a great uh, man and also a great mathematician uh, with a big heart. I, uh, I must say that I learned a lot from, uh, as I said, not only math from mathematics, but life lessons. I was really well treated and he hosted me in his own house with his wife Dora and uh, uh, also children and uh, I was very uh, happy to, 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 to meet this, uh, this man. Uh, I will let you just because when I fished with him uh, this small movie that I made in 2014 when I visited uh, Asen at, his, uh, uh, at Ann Arbor uh, at, since at that time, the discussion uh, was a lot about uh, metric regularity. This is why I entitled this small movie, Studio Metric Regularity presented uh, some. This is just some two uh, pictures here in an arbor and uh, his house. And here a picture in my house in Limoges and in a Moroccan restaurant when he, sh we shared very uh, nice food since as unlike also Mediterranean foods. And this is uh, the last picture that I got from Asen when he visited me in, uh, in Limoges. We got some hike in Limoges. Uh, you saw the, the Limoges uh, limousine cows, okay? And this is the, 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 the movie that I want to share with you. It will take one minute, 30 seconds.
So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Alex, the floor is to you now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samir, for sharing your memories and these nice pictures and the movie. Uh, just keep in mind that many people in this, in this uh, audience uh, love Mediterranean food. Uh, be, be, be cautious when making claims of this kind. So, uh, Marco, would you like to step in? Oh, yes, I'm very pleased. Okay. So, Marco Lopez, Spain. Alicante, another place, another good place with Mediterranean food, and also another course of Ascendonchev. Please. Okay, thank you, Alex. Uh, uh, good evening, Australian friends, and uh, good morning, uh, European colleagues and friends. And my greetings and best wishes from Alicante. I would like to begin by thanking the organizers of Umbat 2021 for the opportunity they give me to say, actually to read, to be more precise, and just to take maximal benefit of my time, uh, to read uh, some heartfelt words at this memorial, at this tribute session to Asen. The last time that I met Asen was precisely at the Vombat 2019 in Sydney. My last uh, but very fond memory of Sen. Was in was Melbourne, released. Marco. Yes. You say in Melbourne, sorry, in Melbourne. You are right, in Melbourne, because uh, I remember that my fondest memory was during dinner at a restaurant in the harbor along the Yarra River in the present company of Alex Kruger and his wife Valentina. At the end of the dinner, we parted warmly like lifelong friends, I could never suspect that this was a true farewell to our time together in this world. I met a friend by the, you are right, sorry, it was in Melbourne, not Sydney. I, I'm completely sure of this, <laughs> no doubt. At the end of the dinner, uh, I met a friend uh, for the first time in a workshop on well postness in optimization and related topics organized by Roberto Lucchetti and held in the wonderful paradise of Garniano, Italy, Bargarda Lake in 19, 1990. There, I presented a communication whose title was On Stability in Linear Semi-Infinite Optimization, the result from a research project, a joint research project, carried out with my colleagues Lola Canovas, Miguel Angel Goberna, Juan Parra, and Maxim Todorov. In this presentation, I made mention of some results that we use in the paper that were found in ASEM book with Tulio Tolegi. Our presentation stimulated ASEM's interest in our work, and we had an interesting discussion, and ASEM encouraged me to shift to our, uh, our research interest from qualitative stability and optimization to the quantitative analysis. In other words, does the Lipschitz stability, including very familiar concepts for him and for many people like metric regularity, strong subregularity, calmness, etc. We followed his suggestions and began to get familiarity with the quantitative approach reading his papers and some others by leading authors in the field. We met Asen again in Sosopol, Borovets, Hong Kong, and many other places, including Alicante, Elche. He came here five times, and even uh, with his family. I remember his family enjoying this typical Oguera celebration in Alicante, eh? with Mira, uh, Kiko, and Dora. Okay. I spent actually some parts of uh, his periodical periods uh, in Alicante and Elche University. He came to Elche University to celebrate my 60th birthday in 2010 and also to Limoges for the ceremony of my doctoral, my doctoral honoris causa nomination. An especially happy encounter was when he invited us to participate in the annual Midwest Optimization Seminar in 2005, staying at his home in Ann Arbor and giving us the opportunity to experience his exquisite hospitality 
and the extreme kindness of his poor family, Dora, Kiko, and Mira. In this seminar held in Kalamazoo, and together with my colleagues Lola and Juan, we presented two communications entitled Meta-Regularity of a Mapping Describing Semi-Infinite Cosine Systems, and the other was Distance to Yield Poisonous in Linear Optimization, an equivocal proof of the influence of ascent on our research trajectory. Also in the same year, 2005, we published our first joint paper in mathematical programming, co-authored by Lola and Juan Parra. It was related with the talk in Kalamazoo, and the title, the exact title was Metric Regularity of Semi-Infinite Constraint Systems. There was a second joint paper with a SEN entitled Isolated Calmness of Solutions Mappings in Convex Semi-Infinite Optimization, published in Journal of Mathematical Analysis and Application in 2009. Later on, in 2015, we published a third joint paper but this time with our former student, Fran Aragon Artacho, with Antoine Beliakov in computational optimization and application. This last paper, the third paper with us, dealt with convergence of quasi Newton methods under metric regularity. Asen and I were co advisors of Fran Aragon's doctoral thesis, but it was Asen who contributed the most with his ideas and dedication, along with Fran's own ability to the great success of this thesis. Asen was more than just a supervisor. He was like the father of Fran in USA, being his host in the first weeks after arriving in our arbor. I intend to confine myself to the time that I was being granted, uh, and I think that is the uh, time to conclude. I will do so by expressing my deep admiration for a sense, who is, in my opinion, an outstanding leader in the subjects he dealt with as a researcher, was a mathematician with a very solid education and a very rich intuition and great intelligence. I will also highlight his most remarkable human qualities including his generosity, as uh, Samir remarked, empathy, and joie of vivre. It is going to take us a lot of time to get used to the fact that he is not longer with us. Be my last words to express our deepest condolence to Dora, Mira, and Kiko, and the rest of the family, to whom we send a big hug and our friendship. This is all. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Marco, for sharing your memories and for reading this nice, these nice words about Asen. Uh, so uh, we are close to completing our session dedicated to Asen. Uh, and uh, after all these words, which have already been said by many people, uh, I can only share a few pictures uh, with a scene mostly taken in Australia, but not only in Australia. So let me uh, try to find the right thing to share. Here it is. C can you see something? Yes. 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 Okay, good. Um, uh, just a few words. The first picture was taken in Limoges, uh, another place where you can try good food. And I think it was at some place where we had a conference dinner after one of the meetings organized in Limoges by um, Michelle and Samir. And it's this is the food. Say again? It's not Mediterranean food. I didn't say Mediterranean food. I said that it was another place where people could try good food. I said, this is what I said. So this is where I first met Asen. And of course, uh, Samir was 
in the center as always. And it was actually Samir who introduced us to each other. And uh, this happened uh, relatively late in 2012, which is a bit strange because uh, we, we had been in touch with Asen for several years before that by correspondence. I remember Asen contacted me asking some questions when he was preparing his last book with Terry, the first edition. And uh, the most surprising thing actually, I later learned from Asen that uh, he had spent uh, quite significant amount of time in Minsk in the early 80s in my home city when uh, I was there, but uh, I knew nothing about his visit to Minsk at that time. Although even at that time, our interests were not too far. So uh, after this meeting in Limoges, uh, not much happened immediately, but uh, in a few years, uh, our interests started uh, merging and closer and closer and closer. And uh, uh, four years later, in 2016, Asen joined me on an RC, Australian Research Council funded project, which allowed us to collaborate closer and also allowed Asen to come to Australia occasionally. So I do have uh, more pictures. Uh, the, uh, Asen gives a seminar in Ballarat in 2017. Of course, uh, uh, as was already mentioned today, Asen likes many things in life, including hiking. And this picture was uh, taken after quite uh, heavy hike in Grampians in the mountains in Victoria. Uh, another photo also in the, on the hills, I wouldn't say in the mountains, Hanging Rock, uh, quite a well-known place in Victoria. And the next year, again in Ballarat, we hosted a conference, Variational Analysis Down Under, and the conference was dedicated to Ascent's 70th birthday. Uh, many people probably in the audience can recognize themselves on this photo. And the photo is taken on campus of our university. Uh, there have been already a few photos shown at this meeting, taken at this conference. This is another one, Ascent giving a talk at the conference dedicated to him. Uh, another happy photo, I send with a glass of wine, Dora smiling, Regina is here. So it was a good year, 2018. Of course, uh, Asen kept working, even sitting in the audience and listening to other people's talk, talks and you see, there were always discussions around him. There were always young people seeking his advice. And of course, there were also some travels. Uh, this is a famous place, another famous place in Victoria called 12 Apostles on the Ocean. The next year, uh, Sen uh, came for Wombat. And uh, as already was mentioned by uh, Marco, this was the last Bombard Asen attended. At that time, we had plans, and some of those plans uh, actually eventuated later. We published several papers with Asen. Asen uh, started also collaborated with collaborating with younger people. Uh, this lines were not continued at that time. Unfortunately, uh, as I said, uh, this uh, Wombat 2019 was the last one uh, attended by ASEAN. So I, I've selected just a handful of photos and um, 
Uh, there are many more on my computer, but definitely I can't uh, distract uh, uh, you for too long from the workshop. Workshop is going to continue, but we still have about five minutes for this memorial session. Uh, does anyone in the audience uh, want to intervene and uh, say something? Feel free to unmute, unmute yourself and say whatever you wish. Uh, I like, I, I, as I want to for, uh, join information that uh, last year, uh, Bombat 2020 ASEAN was the keynote speaker. Yes, uh, last year, you are right. Thank you, Ming. Uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, confirm this with photos because last year one was 100% online and uh, Asen agreed to present at Pombat and discuss uh, with us the contents of this book uh, Vladimir talked about, which is going to appear uh, at, the, at the beginning of next year, hopefully. It was announced uh, in October this year, but it didn't happen, but hopefully it will be released soon. And we are looking forward actually to seeing this book. Uh, there were already questions last week at the session dedicated to ASEAN and the Australian Mathematical Society meeting where to read about all these regularity concepts. And my answer was actually wait for this new book to appear and hopefully all the answers would be there. Any more comments, remarks, suggestions? As, as I recall, uh, we even discussed the sun coming to give the lectures in Australia at some point during that time, you know. Yes, there was an idea to have a series of lectures here, and we discussed with Asen the possibility of him giving a few lectures here, or at least online. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. In, in fact, uh, as Mira said, it's 90 days today. Uh, it was uh, a shock for many of us in September this year to receive this terrible news about Asen uh, uh, passing away. Uh, there were plans, of course. Uh, 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 surprisingly, I, I was in communication with Asen sometime before that, and he, he never mentioned to me being sick, which, which is, of course, understandable. So anyway, if uh, no more uh, comments, remarks, I will stop the recording.